Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is Laboratory Investigation 1, Microscope Lab. First, we have to discuss how the light microscope works. So this is technically called a compound light microscope because it involves numerous lenses where the magnification is compounded. So it's a compound light mic. Um, the very first microscopes would have been one or two lenses, and then from there it just got more and more um, magnified. Um, the microscopes in an average classroom now are actually quite advanced, especially compared to a few hundred years ago. So if we start from the top going on down, you look into the eyepieces. So the eyepieces, sometimes there's one, so you would close the one eye and look in with the other, um, and sometimes there's two. Uh, oftentimes there's this interpupil adjustment, meaning uh, you can adjust the eyepieces. Sometimes you can actually spread them farther apart or uh, closer together. You can also um, rotate the little uh, edge of the eyepiece, which is a minor focusing. Now the eyepieces by themselves, is times 10. So if you just had the eyepieces and you're looking at something, you're magnifying that object 10 times, but it's not just the eyepieces that the image is uh, actually traveling through in terms of the light reflecting off of it. Uh, it's actually going through these objective lenses, which I'm gonna get to in a sec. Uh, the head of the microscope here, uh, the nose piece, an important uh, part in terms of rotating these objective lenses, uh, the way that you actually would tend to hold the microscope if you were picking it up is by the neck and the base. I typically instruct students to grab the neck with one hand and put their hand under the base just to make sure you're not going to drop it. Now when it comes to, to the objective lenses, there are three typically. Now some microscopes have four. It, it really depends. Three or four. Um, and the uh, objective lenses, a lot of times there'll be a red one a yellow one, actually we'll write on top of that in black so you can see it, and a blue one. And I've also seen ones that have like a white stripe around it, so it would be a white uh, lens. Now the red by itself is times four, the yellow by itself is times ten, and the blue by itself is times 40. So you have to actually multiply the magnifications to figure out the total. What I mean is, if you're looking through the eyepieces, which is times 10, and you happen to have the red objective lens pointing down, it would be 10 times 4. So the total magnification when you're actually looking through the red objective lens is going to be times 40. If you move to the yellow one, 10 times 10 would be times 100. And then finally, times 400 with the blue. Now, like I said, sometimes there's even another one, which is 100, and that would be times 1,000. I've read that light microscopes, when you get to the 2,000 magnification, that's the limit. When you go in closer and closer than that, the effectiveness of light in terms of reflecting off of an object and giving you a clear image, it starts to diminish. So going beyond the light microscope capability, which is beyond that 1,000 or 2,000 magnification, you have to use an electron microscope, which is very different in terms of um, how expensive they are and how they work. Uh, but the average classroom has got this. A uh, stage. This is where the actual specimen is mounted. Usually there are stage clips, little uh, metal parts that keep the glass slide on the stage. When you rotate some of these focus controls, uh, the stage moves up and down, and that allows you to uh, focus the image. The stage control here moves the slide in a horizontal sense on top of the stage so that you can make sure that the precise part of the specimen you want to look at is right above the light source. Usually in the stage in the middle, there is a hole that allows the light, when it's turned on, to go up through the condenser and into uh, the hole in the stage. So that's why it's a light microscope. You are using light to be able to see it. And since you are using light, if you want light to literally give light to what you're looking at, it has to be a very thin, 
thin specimen. Usually we're talking one or two cells thick in terms of how thin something needs to be sliced. Uh, if you're looking at human tissue, um, you know, taking, um, let's say, a part of a, a fingernail. Like, let's say you clip your fingernails and you put that down. You're like, I want to look at what my fingernail looks like. It might just look like a dark sliver because it's too thick for light to actually shine through it. Um, I've had students, you know, uh, and I wouldn't advise this. I've had students uh, pull off like part of a hangnail and if part of it is thin enough, um, then they can actually see through it. Um, we'll look at some specimens actually in this particular lesson where it's very thin in terms of how thin the cell is, how thin the tissue slice is, so that light can shine through it. When you're focusing, uh, later on in this lesson I'll give you um, instructions about how to specifically use these parts. When the, when the focus controls are being used, you start with this. This is called the coarse focus. The big one is the coarse focus, and this one is the fine focus. So you move the coarse focus first. That's the one that actually moves the stage up and down. So while you're looking through the eyepiece, you move the stage up and down until it becomes clear. Then you can make it even extra crisp by moving that fine focus. Uh, the condenser, I haven't really mentioned what that actually does. You can adjust how much light is actually going through um, the condenser and into the, uh, the stage region. So those are uh, the major parts of the light microscope. All right, microscope use. So first you gotta mount the specimen. Uh, a lot of the specimens I use in my classroom actually are pre-made. Um, they're tissues that have been in the slide and preserved in the slide for years. Uh, but I also have students make their own slide. So you take that kind of rectangular glass slide uh, with a medicine dropper or pipette. Um, you can you know, take cells out of uh, an aqueous environment if you're doing a protist study, uh, put a drop on the middle, then you put a cover slip down, which is a very thin square piece, and that causes that drop to, it, it just kind of flattens uh, the, the water out, and so it makes it a nice, thin, aqueous environment, uh, and the cells, if they're alive and moving, will be swimming around under there. Um, if it's uh, plant cells you've taken from a leaf, uh, you have an environment now where they're contained, flat, and, um, in a situation where the light's going to be able to shine through and you can actually see the cells and the cell parts. So mount the specimen. You're going to place the slide on the stage within the clips, meaning um, sometimes uh, some older microscopes actually have stage clips that you have to lift up and put these metal pieces on top of the slide like that. Um, others have a situation where um, you kind of have to brace the slide against some metal parts like this. Um, there'll be uh, kind of a metal region here and then a, a stage clip that kind of keeps it locked in. Uh, and you can um, move this back and forth to, to release the slide. Uh, so make sure it's placed in the clips and it's flat on the stage. You also want to ensure that the specimen is above the light source. One of the biggest um, troubleshooting things I've had with students where, uh, you know, they spend five minutes trying to find the specimen and trying to see the cells and like, I can't find it. A lot of times the specimen isn't above the light source. They're, they're just looking at an another part of the slide. Uh, so you have to make sure that if there's, you know, a tissue here that is right above the light source on the stage. Also make sure that the lowest objective lens, it's usually that red one, the one that's times four, total of times 40 magnification with the, the eyepiece is facing downward. See, there it is, times four. Um, the reason why is you want to start zoomed out as far as possible. Uh, make sure that image is centered, you can see it clearly, and then zoom in with the, you know, move to the yellow one, move that nose piece so that you're looking through the times 10, refocus it, and then move to the times uh, 40, which is a total of 400 if you want. Um, it really depends on the specimen in terms of how far you want to go. Sometimes uh, the times 40, which is the total for this one, remember, um, let me make it an equal sign uh, with the, uh, the eyepiece, makes it a total of times 40. Uh, sometimes times 100 is the best view. It really depends on what structures you're trying to see. And I'll, and I'll point that out with some of the, uh, the specimens we have in this lesson. 
While looking through the eyepiece, move the coarse focus to see the image, then the fine focus. Like I told you uh, on the previous slide, you want to start with that coarse focus. That's the one that moves the stage up and down. Then when it's nice and crisp, then move the fine. When the image comes into focus, adjust the nose piece to use a higher magnification if you wish. Like I said, you can then move to the times 10, to the times 40, and refocus under that higher magnification. Always you know, go, go a little bit with the course. Once you've actually uh, moved the stage to the right location, usually you don't have to move the course focus, fo focus that much, uh, just a little bit, just to fine tune it, and then fine focus, uh, you can move freely back and forth. And it's as if you're like looking at very tiny cross sections along the cells. Sometimes if a tissue is um, a little thicker than one cell, when you move the fine focus, you can see, like you'll you'll actually start to see the top of the tissue come into focus and the bottom of the tissue come into focus. It's pretty fascinating how you can zoom into very uh, specific parts of tissues by uh, using the fine focus while you're looking through.